So ARM has announced five new designs, four new CPU cores, and a new GPU. In this video, I want to give you an overview of how these new CPUs and GPUs fit into the general scheme of things. And I also have follow-up videos where I do a deep dive into some of the CPU cores and into that new GPU. So the new CPUs are the C1 series, the ARM Lumex C1 series, starting with the C1 Ultra, then you have the C1 Premium, then you have the C1 Pro, then you have the C1 Nano. After that, we've also got the new Mali G1 Ultra. Okay, let's dive into the overview. Okay, so let's get into this. We've got four CPUs and a GPU to look at. So if you remember from previous videos, I've mentioned that ARM has done some rebranding. So now the mobile processors are known as the ARM Lumex uh, lineup. Platform really is the word they're looking for. We've also got this ARM Neva, which we haven't had any announcements yet. We already know about ARM Neoverse uh, and so on. So we're looking at new things that have been announced in the ARM Lumex platform. Now, this is something that happens every year. 2021, we had our first ARM v9 processors with SVE2, and then we went through consecutive years, and now here we are in 2025 with the Lumex uh, CPUs. And the big thing here that we're going to talk about a little bit is it, this has got SME2, so that's Scalable Matrix Extensions version 2, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So what has been announced? Well, basically, we've got a new CPU cluster. So remember these CPU clusters, depending on who it is, uh, that's making them can have different cores in them small cores performance cores workhorse cores and so on so we've got a whole bunch of new cores and we've got the new mali g1 ultra gpu there's also some other stuff which i won't cover to do with system interconnect and the system uh, memory management unit okay so what we're looking at here is a double digit performance and efficiency gains in the cpu everything's got sme2 uh, available. It's ARM 9.3. It's targeted at the second generation of 3 nanometer. Of course, it can be built on uh, older generation of 3 nanometer or, or higher if it wanted to. We've got a new ray tracing unit inside of the uh, GPU. It's uh, Android 16 ready. That's what it's uh, been aimed at. Uh, and also, as I said here, there's this new uh, interconnect architecture, which we won't cover much at all. So, this is the four new CPUs. Now, last year, we've there were three CPUs available. So your little core, your high-end core, and your flagship core. And now we've got four. So you've got the ARM C1 Ultra, the ARM C1 Premium, the ARM C1 Pro, and the ARM C1 Nano. Now, I've got a separate video dealing with the greater details of all of these. So do watch out for those videos. Uh, now, basically, these two, the Ultra and the Premium, are the successors to the Cortex-X925. So we no longer have the Cortex-X line. We have the C1 Ultra and the C1 Premium, and we guess in other years the C2 Ultra and the C2 Premium, and so on. Then this C1 Pro is the successor to the Cortex-A75, and the C1 Nano is the successor to the cortex a 520. So these are all new CPU cores uh, and the reason they're all new is that we've gone to ARM v9.3 which means that all the cores have to have the same level of architecture so that a process, a, a, an app running basically can jump between any of the uh, chips and the capabilities remain uh, the same. The performance and the efficiency is different but the capabilities remain the same so now they're all at ARM v9.3. Now talking about uh, SME version 2, over the years, there have been different uh, technologies added into the CPUs, not into the GPU, not into an NPU, into the CPU to enable AI workloads. And so back in the day, you had Neon, which is kind of their SIMD uh, technology. And then when we had ARM v9 announced, it had an S. VE2 engine inside of it. There was also SME from ARM, technically published, but it was never implemented by ARM 
or by anybody else as far as I know. And now we've got SME2, which is part of the new Lumix launch here for the C1 CPU cluster. So why SME2 matters? Just as a side note, Apple have already implemented SME2 in their chips. So the M4, for example, has got SME2 in it. It enables certain AI workloads to work very quickly on the CPU without having to send it off to the GPU, without having to worry about whether there's a, an NPU or any kind of neural engine. And you can get up to five times performance lift, depending on the workload, of course. It can, it can be more uh, energy efficient and it's completely inside of the CPU uh, cluster. Now here's an example that ARM have given. So this is the CPU power, the amount of energy being used as it's running Geekbench object detection. As you can see, here is the amount uh, you know, each iteration, you can see that, and it's quite high. Now, when you run that same one with SME enabled, and the Geekbench has SME code in it, so it's not doesn't happen for free, it's got SME code in it, then you can see that it's much lower uh, energy usage, and actually the job finishes quicker. So there's a 12% performance gain, and an overall 28% decrease in power. So that's the efficiency of SME2, but again, this is for AI workloads and the code has to be there to utilize it. And talking of the code being there to utilize it, ARM, of course, are doing a lot of work to make sure it's there for everybody in the ecosystem and very easily to run. So they've been adding SME2, enabling it in all different places in the software stack, including inside of Android, including inside of various libraries. So it's there ready to go. So actually some stuff probably already has SME2 enabled in it. It hasn't been able to run because they didn't have it in the hardware. But now when the SME2 enabled hardware comes out, you'll be able to benefit from those features straight away. Now, one interesting point about the SME engine inside of the new C1 cluster is if you notice here, it's actually on the outside. Now, traditionally things like the floating point unit, even the SVE2 unit, the, the scalable vector unit, they are per core. Each one has one of those units. And that can be a bit of a trouble because, for example, if you're down at the nano end, you still need to dedicate silicon and uh, energy to running an SVE core. Uh, and actually, is it the same one as what you want in the big core? Do you create a, a, a cut down one that's, you know, not so wide? You know, so it can be a bit of a tricky thing when you've got multiple cores. So what ARM have decided to do now is the SME2 unit is actually outside of the CPUs, but still part of the CPU cluster. And what that means, you can have up to two of them and each CPU over the system bus can talk to that and say, do these things for me. Now, it's fully integrated in terms of the caches and the buses and uh, everything else. So it's not like a GPU or an NPU that's stuck outside of the cluster, like a GPUs, and it has to talk to it and initialize it and say, you know, I want to talk to you. Can I send you this job? Yes, you can. And you know, all the stuff that has to go on between two distinct and separate processors. But here it's part of it. But the, the logic is shared across all of the different uh, CPU cores. And there can be two of them. And then they talk to it rather than replicating the same thing across each one. And you're probably not going to need an SME core across each one. You're not be running all these workloads across all of the cores. You want to just run it on that piece of logic and then give the answer back to the CPU. So an interesting different approach so as I said, Neon, Floating Point Unit, SVE2 are all per core, but now with SME2, it's per cluster. So what does this mean in terms of what can be built? Well, of course, there's a whole variety of different combinations, and this is only, you know, some of them, some of them may be the more obvious ones. You can start with just two small nano cores. If you had, for example, uh, you know, some kind of small uh, device that you wanted to build, even a single board computer, a, a very low end handset. Then, of course, you know, you can go four, you can go to six with two pro cores and four nano cores. You can have two pro cores and six nano cores so an octa core this is really where mobile phones really start to take off so down here at the low end a four plus four a very traditional setup uh, for many many years a one plus three plus four setup with one premium core and then you could have a two plus six setup with two premium cores and six pro cores and then you can even have a, a two plus six or so two ultra cores six pro cores and of course you can you can divide this up if you want so it really does depend on what each oem wants but notice here that you get 17 times more performance versus just this simple and these are all available in the same c1 line arm 
V9.3 SME2 uh, enabled, and then the the you know your media techs of the world, whoever can choose what kind of chips they want to build for the different levels of devices they're trying to target. Now moving on quickly to the GPU. So we've got the Mali G1 Ultra, 20% better performance. There's some improvements in AI, 9% less energy per frame, and that's without using any kind of uh, upscaling technology to say, oh, I'm actually going to render less and then upscale. So that's 9% just on the same setup. And then a big improvement in the ray tracing unit. So that's a, a big item on this particular GPU. Now they're calling it a platform now because ARM are offering more and more services to its partners, even to the point now where it will get to right to the uh, production ready files and layouts and things they need that have been verified and tested all of the you know the efficiencies of how you know should this unit be closer to this unit what the pathways all that stuff gets worked out and then they can say to the soc maker look just take this bit and stick it in and it's all production ready at, at three nanometers so that's what they're offering and uh, of course this is something that has been growing uh, over time the more and more services that arm have offered and also the physical implementations they're now aiming for something in the region of 4.1 gigahertz so last year's one could go up to 3.6 gigahertz if that's what the OEM, the SOC maker decide to do this year, they can go over four gigahertz and ARM have the physical implementations of that, the bit that gets sent to the to the fabrication process and all the optimizations and it's verified ready for SOC makers. So what are the performance numbers? Well, before we look at the performance numbers, we need to look at what we're comparing. So last year's kind of reference device was two Cortex-X 925s, four cortex a 725s and two Cortex 520s. And if you go back to the previous slide, at around 3.6 gigahertz. Okay, this year is going to be two C1 Ultras and six C1 Pros at 4.1 gigahertz with SME2 enabled. And the other thing to remember here is also that the RAM speed now for LPDDR5X has jumped up from uh, 8,533 to 9,600. If you take that all into account, what are you going to get? Well, you're going to get a 45% increase in multi-threaded score, which is just a mind-blowing number. The C1 Ultra gives a 25% increase in performance compared to the setup with the X925. And then you can see other things here, 24% for web browsing, 15% for app launch. Move over to the GPU. Some of these benchmarks are seeing even 25, 30% or more increases in performance performance but again just let me re-emphasize this is the whole system so this is all of the cpu cores running at their older frequencies now running at their new frequencies running with a higher uh, math throughput but even if you look at that there is a double digit ipc increase for the c1 ultra and the c1 pro and i cover all of that in my deep dive videos Okay, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.